Hi everyone, it's Trace here, the humorous tutor. Now, maybe you clicked on this video because you just wanted a bit of a recap, or maybe you, like myself, found the differences and similarities between osmosis and diffusion to be a bit confusing. Well, don't you worry, I've got a solution for you. That's right, so we're going to talk about diffusion and osmosis. What are these? What's similar between them? and what's different between them. So first up, we've got ourselves a container in front of us and I've filled it up with blue and that's denoting water. So that blue is basically just so many H2Os, which are still molecules, and that's going to fill up that container. All right, so now I'm just gonna get rid of the H2Os because we know that that blue water is a lot of H2Os and we're happy to get rid of them. Now let's talk first about diffusion. You'll notice I've drawn in a bunch of these red dots. Now these red dots are going to represent the particles or molecules that are suspended within that water. And so that's gonna be our solute. The water itself is the solvent. And together, the solute and the solvent form a solution. Now solutions are always going to try and reach equilibrium in the sense that we want the solute particles to basically just be as far away from each other as possible. And also what that means is if we were to take a sample of this solution at any point, we would get the same amount of solute per solvent. So we've got equilibrium and equal sign, high and low concentrations with up and down arrows respectively. And so let's just, for example, say we split this current solution into nine parts. And roughly, you can see that we get one solute per so unit solvent. And so we can say that currently, this solution is in equilibrium. Now, if I get rid of the current solutes, and now let's just say I've put in via a pipette or a dropper, a bunch of this solute into a small region of solution. For example, I've just put a few drops of red food coloring, let's say, into the water, and I've put it into one region of the container, and we can see that at that moment in time, that red food coloring is going to remain in that spot where it's going to be in a high concentration, and the rest of the water that I've not perturbed will be of a low concentration. Now, remember, that solution is going to want to try and reach equilibrium. And how is it going to do this? Well, you are going to get movement of the solute, those red dots, from its high concentration to the low concentration. So basically, it's going to spread itself out. And remember, the more spread out it is, the likelier it's going to reach equilibrium. Equilibrium being the state where it's most spread out. And so diffusion is the process where both the solute and the solvent molecules are going to rearrange themselves in such a way that we reach equilibrium. Specifically, when we're talking about the solute, okay, so the red dots, it's the solute that moves from that original high concentration to the low concentration, and then therefore we get equilibrium. So let's define diffusion. Okay, diffusion is the movement of the solute from a high concentration to a low concentration. So what I want you to focus on there is that what moved, it was the solute. And in what direction? We went from high concentration to a low concentration, thereby reaching equilibrium in this container. Okay, hopefully the process of diffusion made sense. Let's talk about osmosis now. Now I've emptied the container, I'll fill it up again with water, by which I mean I will scribble in some blue to signify water, and I'm gonna put in a very important component um, of osmosis, and that is our semi-permeable membrane. Semi meaning partially, so this membrane is only partially permeable, so not everything can move through it. We can see that water though, H2O, those H2O molecules are small enough to move across the membrane either side, freely moving, water's gonna move as if nothing is in its way. However, if I were to fill this water with that solute, 
Notice how the solute, the size of it, is much too big to fit across the gap between the semi-permeable membrane, which means we are not going to get solute movement across this membrane. And therefore, currently, we have a high concentration on the left and a low concentration on the right. Now, remember, we couldn't move the solute, but we can move the solvent, which is water. And because we want the solution to be in equilibrium, what can move will move. The solute can't, so it's stuck, but water can. So envision we took this portion from the right-hand side and that water moved across the semi-permeable membrane to fill the left-hand side. And so this movement of water is called osmosis, whereby we get that movement of water from that low concentration to a high concentration. And now we get roughly equal concentrations. Now look at the ratio between the solute and the solvent on either side of the permeable, semi-permeable membrane. You can see now, on the left, we roughly still have one solute particle per rectangular-ish portion of water. And that's matched on the right. And so remember, we couldn't get the solute moving across, but water can freely move across the semi-permeable membrane. And so the process of osmosis is the movement of water from a low concentration to a high concentration to therefore dilute out basically the high concentration to equal out the concentrations across the semi-permeable membrane. All right, so that was osmosis. Now let's compare and contrast osmosis and diffusion. So what I've got here is a Venn diagram. Let's start with diffusion. So let's first define what it is. So which molecules are involved in the process of diffusion? So in the process of diffusion, it's both the solute and the solvent particles moving and rearranging themselves in such a way that it reaches or the solution, sorry, reaches equilibrium. The major player here was the movement of the solute, and the solute moved from an area of high concentration to low concentration. And remembering back to the start of the video, in the container where we described diffusion, we did not have a semi-permeable membrane, so it's not necessary for diffusion to occur. Now, let's talk about osmosis. No. which particles were involved in the process of osmosis. In osmosis, we had the solvent, which was water particles, moving across the semi-permeable membrane. And this is important. So osmosis, we're only talking about water movement. In diffusion, we're talking about movement of everything else. In osmosis, the solvent moved from an area of low concentration too high concentration. And in osmosis, the movement we're talking about is across a semi-permeable membrane. Cool, so that was osmosis. Now in the middle, what did these two processes have in common? Remembering that diffusion is movement of literally everything, and osmosis is really just describing movement of water. And now both of these processes aim to reach equilibrium, whether it be in a big solution or across a membrane. And in both of these processes, to reach equilibrium, that required the movement of molecules. Just different molecules per process. And lastly, you'll notice that we did not need to use any energy to push the movement of molecules, and therefore no energy was required, and these are both passive processes. Hopefully that made sense, the difference between osmosis and diffusion. If you've got any questions, of course, please feel free to get in touch with me. And until then, we will see you next time. Thank you very much.